All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is episode nine of the Halted Production Show. My name is Donnie. With me, as always, is Austin. How are you doing today, Austin? I'm doing good. How are you doing tonight, Donnie? Doing, I'm doing all right. They, uh, they postponed my lemons race this weekend, so I gotta wait till November for that. But oh, oh darn! You'll get over it. I know. know. But in other news, it was my birthday this weekend. <laughs> Uh, I said happy birthday to you on the last one. You don't get two. I, no, I, I get however many birthdays I want. Because pretty soon, getting old is just going to be depressing instead of fun. <laughs> you kids and your happy birthdays and your Donny Iris and your rock and roll music. <laughs> Devil music. <laughs> so, Donnie, what are we talking about today? We're talking about every. We're talking about things that every kid wants. We can't talk about that on this podcast. You, no, 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 not that. All right. You, you want you want a front engine car, right? Always. You want something rear wheel drive? Yes. You want a manual transmission? Yes. Do you like the Porsche 928? Yes. Well, we're going to talk about the car that inspired the design of the Porsche 928. Are we talking about a football? In a sense, but we're talking about the AMC Pacer. I have to admit I love this car. <laughs> I feel like I say that every episode that I love all these cars, but I do. They're just, all of them are so weird and quirky. Like they were discontinued for a reason, but I love them. Oh yeah. So, so let me take you back to 1975. Okay. All right. Got my eyes closed. I'm growing out my hair. You know, we're some we're Leonard Skinner's playing off in the distance. Exactly. Maybe some, uh, some, ZZ Top. Don't, ZZ Top is amazing. Don't even use that in our comedic reference. So, so you have $3,600 in 1975. You need to buy a economical vehicle because we just got out of the OPEC oil embargo. Right? Right. The, the same oil embargo that killed all of the muscle cars. Mm-hmm. We're just coming out of that. So you need something economical. You need something small. You need something that can still seat four people. Do you know how they got the Pacer to be able to seat four people? Well, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, they, they it's the first car to be designed from the inside out. Yes. So, you know, basically they took four people, sat them in just four chairs and designed this car around them. They gave them the space they needed and then they designed the car to be as compact as possible while still providing enough room inside to be comfortable. So you say compact. Do you know how wide the Pacer is? I don't, but it, 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 I believe it's pretty wide. 77 inches. Now, give me some perspective. What's what's um, other cars like? Do you do you want to know what's 76 and a half inches wide? What? A 1975 Cadillac Fleetwood. It's a wide car. <laughs> the Pacer is a very wide, very short, very low. It, it if you put a 928 into a trash compactor, the Pacer is what would come out. And, and I know we're saying that, you know, the 928 came after the Pacer. The 928 was inspired by the Pacer. But they're almost identical if you squish the 928 a little bit. <laughs> so another weird thing about the um, Pacer, did you know that the passenger door was four inches longer than the driver's door? Other way around. No. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. Passenger door was longer. I know I'm right. Do you know why that was? It made loading passengers easier for the rear seats. It was actually to promote getting in on the curb side of the vehicle. Yes. Versus getting in on the traffic side of the vehicle if you were parallel parked. But who parallel parks? I sure don't. You live in Florida. Y'all don't park. You'll just roll up into a parking lot and park wherever you want to. It's it's creative vehicle abandonment. <laughs> I, I love that. I, I really do. Um, 
But but no, you are correct. But the best thing about the Pacer, they made 280,000 of them. Now, the biggest year being 1976. Yeah, second year of production. Yeah, and they made, you know, 117,000. You know, what is that? About a third, over a third of the total production made in that one year. Yeah. You know, dwindling, All... dwindling off into 1980 when... When they made like seven. Uh, let's see. They made more wagons in 1980 than they did the sedan coupes. They, they made 1,300... The tracks? Yeah, the, they made 1,300 wagons. No, they actually made a wagon in this. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, it's either a hatchback or a wagon. Yeah, so they... they that was the only... No. The, wa- the wagons are cool. I, I'm going to disagree with you. I think the hatchbacks are the better ones. I, I'm not and... saying they're not the better ones. They're obviously far superior. But a lot of people hate on the wagons. They're still cool. Do you know Do you know where they were assembled? Where, where? where most of them were assembled? Where? In Kenosha, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. You know what else they came with? They came off the assembly line in Wisconsin. What? You got a block of cheese in the car. That went that went from like Midwest to Boston, and I apologize for that. <laughs> so, did you know in this small economy car built for gas mileage and to be cheap, they introduced a V8 in 1978? Of course they did, because gas was getting cheap again, and they went, wait a second, we're missing out on something. Well, wait a minute, we have a relatively light car for the time. This rear wheel drive has a short wheelbase. Let's throw a V eight in it. Yeah, they were they were looking at the Monza, the Chevrolet Monza that came with a three fifty, and they went, "Wait a second, we can do that too." Now, the look of the Pacers are really controversial. I mean, at the time, they were hailed as being pretty forward thinking um but people really don't like them what do you think about them do you know who uh who really likes the pacers who exactly i don't (laughs) you don't like pacers i'm not a i'm not a fan of the pacer i prefer the gremlin to the pacer I think everybody prefers the Gremlin to the Pacer, but that doesn't mean you can't be a fan of the Pacer. I'm not disagreeing with you. I just don't understand how you can't be a fan of the Pacer. Like, I mean, lo- look at the back windows. Look at the bubble shape. It came with a V8. Come on, you got to be a fan of this. <laughs> you know, you know who was a uh, who was a real big fan of the Pacer though. And, and I'm not making a joke this time. All right, I'll, 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 if you were going to make the same joke, I was going to just hang up my earphones and be done. No, no, I'm not. I'm not making a joke. Who was who was a fan of the Pacers? Wayne Campbell and Garth Algar. I knew you were going to make. That's it. right. We're going right into Wayne's World. All right, you get you get Wayne's three. World party time. Excellent. You you get three, and that was two. <laughs> uh. All right, I guess I'll have to hold out for a minute on that one. All right, so another tidbit of information that some people might not know. I don't know if you know this either. So when they were originally designing it in the original plans, almost our napkin, <laughs> almost right up until production, it was supposed to have a Wankel rotary engine in it. Wrap, 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 wrap. It, I think it would have been cool. I don't disagree with you. I think cause imagine, you got, imagine the you little remember, with a with a rotary in it. You know, you got to remember AMC was the the parts bin cars. They, they went to yeah, they went to General Motors for parts. They went to Ford for parts. They went to Chrysler for parts. AMC, they they did make a lot of parts on their own, but a lot of them 
came from other manufacturers. So the body surface on it was 37% glass. That's 16% more than the average passenger car at the time. Like that's, that's crazy. That's 16% more death. No, that's not 16% more death because it was made using very, very forward thinking with, um, with safety. I mean, it was the first car, um, to have the, um, to be designed using the cab forward concept at the cab time forward. Yeah. Swing. It was, I don't know if that was Wayne's world reference or not. It was, it was that, that was, that was the last, <laughs> that was the last. All right, fine. Let's see. So, I mean, it's, I think it's a good car. Now, what, you, you said it was like $3,800? 36 $3,600? That's, that's seventeen four today. seventeen four. that's, that's a That's about... a Civic. You can get a Civic for that. You could get a Cruze for that. You could get a Corolla for that. They're going to be base models, but you could. Like, what is... You could get a Focus for that. I mean, so I just looked up um, the Versa MSRP. You know, that's... It's 12.3. Yeah. No, no. But you think... The Versa is a subcompact, though. You've got to go compact. You've got to go... Subcompact. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Yeah, you can't compare the Pacer to a Ford Fiesta. It's got to be compared to a Focus. Which we do not suggest anyone ever purchase. I mean, under seventeen thousand dollars today, you can get a Chevy Cruze, Chevy Chevy Sonic, um, Dodge Dart, Fiat Five Hundred, Ford Focus. Um, th there's a pretty good amount of cars you can get for under seventeen. Now, the best looking one, I'd say, would be that Chevy Cruze. I, I like it. I mean, other than the Ford Fiesta, I love the Ford Fiestas. But I think at the time, th this was about the best car you could get for the money. I mean, with the looks of it. I know it was weird. I know it was controversial. But it was pretty cool. Yeah, and here's here's the thing, though. Here's the awesome part about the Pacer. They didn't just build the Pacer or the Pacer wagon. They made, let me let me get to it. You know, you could get the X package, which was vinyl bucket seats, sports steering wheel. The DL was the upscale one. Limited had leather seats and extra soundproofing. They had the Levi's package. We're getting to that. Oh, sorry. You could get, you could get the Sundowner, which was only available in California because it's a downer when you have to deal with California engine emissions. <laughs> you could you could get the Carl Green Enterprises edition or or if you wanted seats made out of denim. Denim you could like get the Levi's package. Is denim like have you ever touched one? It's denim like. Have you ever touched the seats in a Levi's pacer? No. They are denim. <laughs> it feels like you're sitting on a pile of jeans, and it's ridiculously comfortable. So, speaking of different kind of trim levels, there were electric pacers. They, oh, of course uh, there were. There was... um. The EVA Electrical Vehicle Associ Associates was best known for its um, change of pace model. Uh, uh, I see what they did there. Yeah. Um, it, in 1978, it was $12,360. And they converted a whopping 100 units. <laughs> 
100 whole cars. 100 whole cars. Um, it was a 20 horsepower DC motor mated to the three speed transmission. And it had a 53 mile range, which is actually about on par with like the first gen of um, Nissan Leafs, right? They, I believe they had like a 65 mile range or something. No, you're thinking of the uh, Mitsubishi IMEV. I don't think I'm thinking of that. No, because the Leaf, you, the Leaf, I remember they advertised it as 200 mile range. I still see them in traffic, and they're weird. I would... I, I sound like a terrible car person, but I, I might buy one. <laughs> I went and... Uh, if we're talking... Well, as as the people who have listened to the first eight episodes have, you know, understood if they've listened to all eight, we like weird cars. A range we, of about 100 miles limits the car's tasks. So really? that's the, that's the first gen. But now, I was talking to somebody the other day, and he said about 60 is what you're looking at realistically today. Okay. So so I went and I drove a Lexus over last weekend. A Lexus CT200H. The Toyota Matrix meets Toyota Prius with a Lexus front end on it. And I just, I can't allow myself to have a soul-sucking... Wait, is that the hatch? Yeah. I I've can't seeing... have a soul sucking um I've been you know, seeing hybrid so many with CBT of yet. I've been seeing so many of those. And they look good. The, what Toyota needs to do is make one branded as Toyota with a with a four banger and a five speed in it. They did. It was called the Toyota Matrix. No. <laughs> but make it look like the Lexus, damn it. Don't make it look like the the Matrix. Have you seen the Matrix? Do you mean the the Toyota IM? If you if you've seen the Matrix, you don't remember it because it's a fucking Matrix. <laughs> you know you know what my favorite Toyota Matrix was. There's not one. The Pontiac Vibe GT. I can I can see that. I have, the Pontiac Vibe is um it has a special place in all of our hearts. But you know. Let's say it's 1975. All right. right. Do you want to win a Pacer? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you can go to Burger King and play their scratch-off game. First place, the big prize, was a brand-new Pacer. I mean, it would have been it would have been cool, but at the same time, for Burger King, that was... $3,900. They probably had a deal with AMC on having the Pacer for free. I mean, they made a bunch of money on that. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, in the in the late 70s, do you know who else bought a bunch of Pacers? Who? Pizza no. Hut. I, I, I was going to say Domino's, but it is Pizza Hut. And they painted them red. They got them red. And, and they, they put the green thing on top, right? Yeah. Made him look like a big ass tomato. Yep. Which I can understand it. Now Domino's has their pizza car, which um, I know you said not to name drop, but my buddy Sam Crack had all the problem with. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to talk about that because that was hysterical and sad at the same time. It's like he. I, I anyway, was on, I was on back to the pacer. <laughs> all right, back to the pacer. Back to the pacer. I'm not going to let you derail my love of the AMC Pacer, damn it. You, you just said you don't like the Pacer. Don't give me that. <laughs> you just said you don't care for it. It's not that I don't care for it. You just like I, the Gremlin better. It, I but, like the Gremlin better. Do you? Okay, let me ask you this. Do you like the early nose or do you like the later nose? The early nose. The, the early nose. Okay. I, I don't um, like the little uppity thing. So, So I have to give a shout out to my my friend and lemons rally competitor gary lieb he lives in california he drove his pacer i believe it's a 76 from california to pennsylvania this winter so february of 2018 did the lemons rally 
with his pacer and drove it home. That takes some huge pelotas. Yeah, he... I mean, if I was going to do something like that, I would hope somebody would have me committed. Yeah. Because that... That's it's not a safe thing to do, and it's not a sane thing to do at and all. And if you're driving from California, you're definitely outside of AAA range. <laughs> like, I mean, you're even if you have the Premier, I mean, that's 400 miles. You know, 400 miles is your limit. Yeah, yeah, but there is still one AMC dealer in existence down in North Carolina, right? Yep. And I hear he's asking way too much for the stuff he has because they're all low miles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're we're talking about Collier AMC. But it's... He's in, he's in Pikeville, North Carolina. I've, one of these days when I go up to Charlotte, I have to make the trip up. Next time and you just, go to Charlotte, let me know. I'll, I'll meet you out there. I love Charlotte. Yeah, we, we'll have to go up there and, and see this place. This This may be our first foray into video it's us visiting collier amc oh sorry I, I mean if you if you want i can talk to uh i can talk to a friend and see if we can get a trans am to drive up there okay really do it in 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 style okay you got me excited <laughs> so so Kristen, if you're listening listening to this i need to borrow your trans am buy your chicken <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would buy a pacer. I would also buy a pacer. I I would buy a pacer if I could find one. I, Do you know how many are for sale within a five hundred mile radius of my living room in Daytona Beach, Florida? How many? One. Really? Yes, there is one Craigslist ad for it, and do you know what? It's listed as sold. Really. They pulled the description down and everything. There's not even a photo on it. I've got none in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, one on one on Facebook. Blue with flames. Um, in Tennessee. Is it like a light blue with flames coming out of the wheel wells? Nope. Damn, so it's not a Wayne's World recreation. I think that's number four. <laughs> Damn it. We're gonna we're gonna have to put a little ticker <laughs> to see how many you, Wayne's you're, World you're really stretching. We make. You're really stretching my editing skills, bro. <laughs> you're lucky I can get the picture on the audio with and sync that up, because you're really stretching it right there. You see that pacer I just sent you? I'm pulling it up now. It looks pretty clean. Like Forty five hundred bucks. God, I can't stand the silence. I, I have to say something. It's no, it's it's fine. But I mean, I wouldn't. Oh my gosh! I wouldn't pay forty five hundred dollars for one. I just found a 1977 AMC pacer. For nineteen nine. What? Nineteen nine. Is it is it on Auto Trader? That's the only thing I can think of. It's on carsforsale.com. I just sent you the link. Let's see this. Let's see what a nineteen thousand dollar pacer looks like today. You're gonna you're gonna laugh, is what you're gonna do. Oh my god. It, ha it has a parachute on the back. Side exhaust. It has a 351 Windsor. It's got a Ford motor in it. Yep. Oh my god, a $36,000 Pacer. This is this is a drag car. That's all this is. This is a drag car. This is not a drag car right here. And this is a thirty-six thousand dollar pacer. Who would pay thirty-six thousand dollars for a so pacer? Let, let me get the listeners in on this. 
So, in, in case I forget to do the. Editing. Oh my god, this one's beautiful. This it is a pea green one. A pea green, dark tinted windows, chrome wheels, completely immaculate interior, black interior, brown dash. Um, the engine bay, I mean, completely chromed out, painted. Um, the wheel wells are painted green. The underside, beautifully painted, no rust. This is as pristine of a pacer as you're going to get. They painted the the grill and they left the bumper chrome. Mm-hmm. And, and I, it's a late it's a late nose car. And I like it. Is the problem? I I do like this. Go buy it for thirty six thousand dollars, Donnie. I'm not buying a thirty six thousand dollar pacer. There is no way you can. No one could sell me a thirty six thousand dollar pacer. You okay. could sell me a thirty-six dollar pacer, but you could not sell me a thirty-six hundred dollar pacer Do you, or a thirty-six thousand dollar pacer. I've got a thirty-nine hundred dollar pacer and a fifty. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Another link coming your way. Got a beige pacer. Okay, you have my attention now. Fifty-four hundred dollar beige pacer. Life affirming beige pacer. There's one picture of it online. Oh, it's two tone. It's beige and brown. You should get this. Next lemons car. Where is it? It's in Michigan. That's okay with me. It's an early car. Straight six. Oh, it's an automatic. I think I could live with it, though. I uh, could live with it. I think you could also live with it. Yeah, I could. I could definitely live with that. There's no for two hundred eighty thousand being produced. There's none. No, no, because they either disintegrated or they. Uh, I mean, finding they've any, been junked long ago. And finding any AMC is hard. Like, I've seen, I'm sending you a gremlin that has been up on Craigslist near me for the last year. I'm not even joking. No engine, no trans. $1,000 for this rusted body. And that's the only one in Atlanta. Yeah, I can't. I can't spend that much on a pacer that doesn't have. That's a gremlin. It's running gear, let alone a gremlin. Like that, that gremlin would be fun to pick up for five hundred dollars, and throw something stupid in it. That's the only reason you'd pick that up. You know, I know a guy that has a four fifty four and a turbo four hundred sitting around. We have to do something. <laughs> are you are you picking up what I'm putting down? I'm picking up what you're putting down. Okay. Now, I can tell you where one pacer went. Where? I can tell you why there's 280,859 or 857, not 858 on the planet anymore. Why? I'm going to take you back to April of 2001. All right. First round of the NBA playoffs. All right. Philadelphia 76ers versus Indiana Pacers. The city of Philadelphia threw a block party. They bought a Pacer, took the windows out of it, and allowed fans to smash the Pacer. In the hopes of smashing the Pacers. Did they win? I'm looking that up right now. You gotta have this information prepared. We are a professional podcast. You know the uh, use of air quotes there. Very high. I mean, whatever you say. Let's see. Two thousand and one, Philadelphia beat the Indiana Pacers. So I guess the bashing it worked. Philadelphia actually went on to the NBA Finals and were beat by the Los Angeles Lakers. 
I, I don't do basketball. I don't know. I don't either. I'm just reading it because it's in front of me. So just just another point that no good sports teams ever came out of Philadelphia. That's true. Speaking of Philadelphia, the Braves just extended their lead over the Phillies by winning against the Giants 2-1. to one. Just got that notification on my phone. Go Braves. <laughs> got to throw that in there. You see, we're not going to talk about baseball here because uh, as a Pirates fan, it hurts. As a Pirates fan, everything hurts for you. <laughs> Did you know there was a, a pitcher for the Pirates that went to my high school? Um, do you know who Matt Capps is? Yeah. Um, the closer for the Pirates for a while. One of their yeah. closers. He went to my high school. Um, uh, he he was drafted right out of high school for to the Pirates. Drafted out of high school straight to the pros. And then had a moderately okay career and then is doing nothing. <laughs> Love you, Matt. All right. So Austin, I, I this is this is strangely reminiscent of an earlier episode where neither one of us has to sell the other one on the car. No, we're, we're both 100% ready to buy the car tomorrow. If we found the right car, I'm sure we would buy it tomorrow. If I found the right car, if I, if I found the wrong car that was cheap, I'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> that might just make it the right car for me. The, the right car is the one that you can afford today. The right car in AMC Pacer is a manual V8 painted beige. No, no, you have to go, you have to go light blue, no. flames from the wheel wells, you have to go Wayne's No, World. and that's five, so stop. With that, I think we're calling it a night. I, I think it's time to party on, Austin. Uh, was that another reference? That was six. All right, close, it, close us out. Close us out. <laughs> I opened it. You close it. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys for letting us ramble on for the last 30 minutes. It was There was a lot of twists and turns, but we finally figured out that, yes, both of us would buy one, even though at the beginning, Donnie said he didn't like the Pacer. That, it's not that I don't like the Pacer. That's what you I just said. like the you Gremlin said, more. I believe verbatim, I don't care for the Pacer. If given the choice... Between the Pacer and the Gremlin, you're never going to be given. The, you're never going to be given that choice, though. You don't know my life. I do know your life. I may have a time machine. I know that what you're going to do after this is go open up a thing of pumpkin beer and sit down on the couch and watch something interesting. You know, I'm going to put on my UGG boots. I'm going to go down to Starbucks. I'm going to get a pumpkin spice latte. All right, guys. So, oh my God, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap up tonight and you can go ahead and follow us on Twitter. It is at the halted prod show. You can also follow me, my at Twitter, basic white girl, basic white girl. Yes. And then you can follow Donnie at little bitch. <laughs> uh, I, do, right, I do that voice too well. You do. You do that very well. I'm kind of scared. Go ahead and, you know, subscribe to us on YouTube. Go ahead and listen to us on um, Podomatic. Share it with your friends. Tie them to a chair. Make them listen. I don't care. That rhymed. So we're going to go ahead and call it a night. I'll see you, Donnie. Have a good one.